Hello everyone, so I made this video explaining how to get to roughly 75% of the Golem benchmark in very easy steps. And the steps that video involved were mostly setting up the Golem properly and making sure your build is complete. And now I've received feedback from players who have now done that and would wish to learn a rotation. So maybe there's a guide for them on how to learn rotations and this is what we're going to do now. I'm going to explain to you some basics of how you can learn a rotation and climb even higher than 75% of a benchmark. And since all classes are very different from each other and different styles work for different players, I'm not actually going to talk about specific rotations today, I'm going to talk about very general basics. Because what I do when I learn a rotation is I go to the benchmark I see the skill order the benchmark is pressing, I copy that skill order and then learn it until I can perfectly copy it and then I get the same benchmark damage. And you as a beginner probably cannot copy it that easily because there is a lot of game mechanics, gameplay mechanics that you are still not that certain on, like skill queuing or simply don't have the right settings to do it. So in this video we are talking about all of that. Alright, so speaking of settings, we actually have to go into our settings first. Now I know people prefer different things, but there are some settings here that will actually just prevent you from playing well. And you have to get rid of them or you have to enable them depending on what they are. First thing is you need show skill recharge. If you don't have that, you don't see your cooldowns, which is really bad for very obvious reasons. Um, next up, you need either fast with range indicator or instant cast. Here, if you have normal cast, you always need to do two inputs to cast a skill, which is slower than having to do only one input. Fast with range indicator, cast the skill on release of the key, instant cast, cast it a bit faster than that. Personally, I play with instant cast all the time. But this is also fine. Next is you cannot run melee attack assist. If you run it and run up to an enemy, your character stops. There are some classes that want you to stand in the hitbox of the enemy. There are some enemies where you want to stack inside the hitbox, etc. So please turn that setting off, it's stupid. And so let's do that. Then I really like lock ground target at maximum skill range. If I turn it off and I cast this slightly too far, it will just tell me out of range. And now I have to find where the max range is so it actually casts. Here it would cast. If I instead have it at have it enabled, um, maybe let's show show the range indicator. It will actually just fix, no matter where my cursor is, um, it will not go beyond the max range and just cast it. Um, so I like this setting. Next up is hide ally visual effects. You should have it either on hide none or only show squad. Problem is if you show only party or hide all, some raid mechanics and strike mechanics are coded as ally effects. And if someone in a different subgroup gets the effect like a green circle, you cannot see it. Like these, these settings just troll you. Either this or that one. I use hide none because I like to see everything. Then we go to graphics options. You need shaders to medium because there are certain clues about the where to stand in certain encounters from the boss arena, like which are just scenery normally, but you like to stand on, on this line or something and you want to see this line, so you need shaders at a certain level. And also character model limit, medium at least, because some enemy attacks count as character models. And if you have it lower than this, you literally cannot see the flame wall that's going to kill you. So, yeah. Then we can go into the key binding settings and here it's important to have strafe left and strafe right. If you want to turn your character, you should turn it by with your mouse, right click to hold and turn. 
if you use this here, now a left turn, <laughs> it works like this and it's just so much slower. Like I cannot even speed up the turning. And yeah, simply use strafing. Don't use these two buttons. Then you need key bindings for all of these skills. Especially important are the utility skills. You cannot be clicking with your mouse. Clicking with your mouse takes away the mouse cursor from the action. And if you're playing with instant cast, there's actually no way from me to range cast this elemental blast on the enemy. I, I cannot aim it. Like it will always go centered on myself. So it's just incompatible with the other setting. Um, you need to use your keyboard or mouse buttons for these keys. Rebind them to something reachable. I think 7890 are kind of useless. Um, you should move it closer to your WASD. All right, so much for the settings. Now let's talk about actual gameplay. As a first exercise, I want to show you how to handle your auto attack chain and how to play around it. And for this exercise, you simply need a melee weapon. I chose the hammer on the ranger. It has an auto attack chain of three strikes. And my goal is now to perfectly use my hammer too without interrupting my auto attack chain ever. So first you can go up to the golem and get a feeling for this auto attack chain. You see the third strike is a bit bigger and takes a bit longer. And now my goal is at the end of the chain to use the hammer 2 skill right when the bar fills up here. Like this. And now my hammer 2 is on cooldown. So I wait again until it's ready and now I use it. And you see I'm never going to cancel a auto attack if I do it this way. Because the biggest damage loss you can have is spending time on something and then interrupting it. So if you manage to get a feeling for how you need to time your input and perfectly get off your weapon skill without interrupting auto attacks, that's already a lot gained here. It helps you gain a feeling of doing a deliberate rotation rather than just panic spamming something. Also, I'm actually only pressing weapon skill 2 here, and I'm only pressing it once. I'm not spam clicking anything, I'm not spamming 1 right now, I'm not holding down 2. I'm only inputting it at the moment that I'm actually using it. So, you can do this for a while, until this feels very natural and relaxing to you, to time this without ever cancelling an auto attack. If you want to check whether you made a mistake, you can also go into a log afterwards and just simply observe if you ever interrupted it. But what you can also do is you can check here. Right now I have hammer strike. These are, this is the first attack in the chain. I've hit 62 times. I've hit 63 times with this one, the second strike and 63 times with the third strike. So you can see that I never actually canceled a, canceled a whole chain. Now I have activated this skill 10 times more because sometimes I was a bit late on my hammer to press, but these, these cancels are relatively short usually. Um, so yeah, this is basically what you want to see. In a log, you would see it even more accurately. Um, and you would see exactly what you've done wrong and when you've done it wrong. Now, after you've done this for a while, um, you want to maybe mix it up a little bit. Because you don't only want to be pressing one ability. Let's, so let's pick another one. And the way we're going to do is, we're going to just use Hammer 4 as well. To be able to alternate. We always do one auto attack chain and then we do two. Then we do one auto attack chain, then we do four. And we will see what happens. One auto attack chain and then four. One auto attack chain, now three. Now we can do one auto attack chain and two again. And now five. Now we may use a utility skill. So get a feeling to always do one auto attack chain and then an ability.
And this is a lot more difficult, actually, because now you're not only forced to count the time between the attacks, but also you also need to kind of keep an eye on all your cooldowns to see which one would be a good choice next. And you still keep the beat and the rhythm of this. I think if you can do this, you're already pretty far ahead in terms of mechanical execution of a rotation. Because now if the rotation tells you to do an auto attack chain, you will simply be able to do that. And now I just fucked up because I was talking rather than focusing. All right, so yeah, as you can see, this is a bit more difficult. Always do one auto attack chain and then come up with the next skill. But it's certainly something you can practice as well to, until you've got some muscle memory for this kind of pattern. All right. After you've done that, now you kind of want to combine the skill of doing auto attack chains with some skill queuing. Um, so the idea is that during an ability, you, you don't want to simply start an auto attack chain again after the, the ability, but during the ability you already want to input the next ability in the rotation, so it perfectly queues up. For example, um, you want during the ability 2, you already want to, uh, to queue up the ability 4, so they go one after the other without auto attacks in between. Uh, let's try again. Auto attack chain 2 4. And you see, actually, by, by the 4 flashing, this, this shows that I've pressed the 4 during the 2, actually. Let's do it again. And then it just perfectly queues up without any time waste in between. So, next exercise is basically always do the same as before, but now do it in groups of 2. So we use 5 and th this utility skill maybe, and now we use 2 and 3, or we can use F2 and F1, and sort of do this kind of grouping of always 2 abilities. And always do auto attack chains in between, get used to never cancelling one. And that's the next step of your practice. So when you can queue these skills without a problem, you can also take an instant cast ability into the mix. This here doesn't have a cast time, so you can try to press it during other skills. For example, like do it like this. So this was an input of 2e4 to get the bonus of, of, the, of the, this skill while pressing these. And the important thing is that instant cast abilities shouldn't delay your rotation output. So it's very good to practice being able to press the skill during another skill without messing up the queuing of everything else. So try to do groups of two again with an instant cast skill in between. Now I know not every class has instant cast abilities in their kit. You can maybe equip one just for this purpose. But this is basically the next mechanical step. All right. Now that we have done groups of two, obviously we might be interested in doing longer chains without any mistake of auto attack chains, right? So for example, you can do a chain of three. Let's actually respawn a new golem so we have a bit more time. Um, let's do a chain of three or chain of four abilities without auto attacks. So let's do 2, 4, F1, 5. We can do auto attack chains in between. Then we maybe do 2 and this skill. And next time all these abilities up, we will do it again. So now let's do 2, 4, F1, 5 and the elite skill with an instant cast in the middle as well. And get a feeling for that. And the important thing is really to make sure that these abilities are actually queued up. They are not, not interrupting anything. Uh, there, there's no auto attacks in between that sneak in. For example, if I don't queue perfectly, I get it like this. 
and you saw like the, the one symbol started flashing there. I'll do it again. And this is a time waste, basically. If the one symbol can has time to start flashing and start executing, this is bad. This is like 0 0.2 seconds lost, and if you do that 100 times, you lost 20 seconds. So, yeah. Like, th this is how you lose DPS, and this is why queuing is important. Let's do a long queue again. Of six abilities, for example. And really get used to this. And also, while talking right now, I've not interrupted any auto attacks. Um, so, make sure that you're also staying consistent with not interrupting auto attack chain. Always do these combos at the end of an auto attack chain. Now, obviously, not every rotation wants you to finish auto attack chains. Sometimes they want you to interrupt the auto attack chain after the first attack in a chain. But obviously this is just an ex equivalent challenge, right? I, now I can I can also interrupt after the first auto in the chain, for example, like this. But yeah. The goal here is that you get more deliberate with your actions, that what you do at the golem is not a coincidence, but that it actually ma matches what you're supposed to do. So for the sake of this exercise, try to do full auto attack chains, try to do queues of two, three, four or five skills, even if your class has that many, and get comfortable with that. Now you may have noticed that during the previous demonstration I never actually used my F3. And the reason for that is that my F3 is an ability that cancels the preceding ability if I use it during the cast. Much like these weapon skills cancel auto attacks if I use them in the middle of an auto attack. For example, if I use F3 during a hammer 4, I will simply interrupt the, F, uh, the hammer 4 and put it on a short interrupt cooldown. And now I know not every class has a F3 ability or a specific ability in the rotation where you could practice this, but you always have a healing skill which you can use for the same purpose. Healing skill interrupts previous abilities, so... Same, same thing here. And the goal now is to use the ability at the end of the cast bar without having an a interrupted auto attack slip in at the end. So let's try to do this. Let's do some auto attacks. And now the goal is hammer four into heal skill without any flashing auto attack signs in between. Like this. And you saw a very brief flash. I wasn't perfect, to be honest. If you're 40 milliseconds off, that's not too bad. If you're 80 milliseconds off, it's still fine. Um, basically, you don't want systematic errors that cost you seconds. But if it's a tiny flash, it should be mostly fine. And here we have the F3, which has the same behavior as the heal skill. So you can also do this. And try to minimize the flashing of the water attack. We can also combine this with longer queues. For example, I can, can go 2 F1 for heal skill. 2 F1 for heal skill. And I also follow up the heal skill with, a, with another queued ability. I could go 2 F1 for heal skill 5, for example. 2 F1 for heal skill 5. And queuing after the healing skill is not a problem because the heal skill interrupts the previous ability but what comes after doesn't interrupt the heal skill. And I can do another Q, 2, 4, F3, F1. And you may have seen that the Q actually failed here. And that's a special thing about your F3. You see your character does a little jump. And while jumping, you cannot cast skills. So actually, whatever you Q will just get ignored. And doesn't, is, isn't cast. So the only way to use an ability out of the F3 is to spam it like a madman afterwards. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of technical details and every class is different in this regard. Unfortunately, in the, doing a general guide, I can't go into the specifics of your specific build. Um, what, what you need to do here is really just experiment for yourself or ask players who know specifically about the class if there's any council details for this rotation. I will provide some links in the video description for you to check out for that as well. 
The last thing we need to talk about before we can look at learning an actual rotation is weapon swapping. Now, weapon swapping, much like the interrupts of certain priority skills, interrupts your currently cast skill. And weapon swapping works at such a high priority that it will interrupt literally anything you do. For that reason, you need to be extremely careful that the previous action is actually fully executed, that the cast bar has filled up before you decide to weapon swap. However, you don't want to wait as long as as starting a new auto attack afterwards because that's obviously just a time waste. So you need to strike a balance between safely concluding your previous action and not waiting too long, so not to waste much time after. And the way to practice this is simple. You just use all the skills on weapon weapon set, then you weapon swap, use all the skills there, and then try to swap back without violating anything that you learned before. So let's just use some skills here. Maybe use this one and this one as well. Use a hammer too, and now we weapon swap. And we try to weapon swap in a way that no new cast bar is started. So that the auto attack we do is finished. One auto attack, two auto attacks, another one, now a trap, and now swap. And you see that I try to swap as cleanly as possible after a skill cast. This obviously takes a lot of time to get completely right. At the start you will see a lot of interrupted auto attacks. Once you get faster you might interrupt your skill casts a little bit, but over time hopefully can make progress on that front. Weapon swapping is quite important for some rotations. Other rotations are maybe a bit easier because they don't involve weapon swapping. So if you think that weapon swapping is one of your weaknesses, maybe it could be a good idea to look towards builds that do not incorporate weapon swaps. Because I know it's something that is quite challenging. However, um, it's also certainly something you can learn to do. and you will notice when you practice rotations it, uh, that builds which do have weapon swaps often have more rotation st structure than those without simply because they have very often a loop that is closed and always the same whereas builds that do not have weapon swaps are often much more complicated and never repeating in their rotation so there's advantages and disadvantages to this after you've gotten comfortable with that, I think it's time to actually start looking towards specific rotations. So that's what we're going to do next. So for the final part of this video, I want to do a little bit of rotation practice so you actually can see live what goes through my mind when I learn a new rotation. And the build I've chosen for this is the Power Holosmith. So we will just go over that now. Um, here you see written down what you have to do. You have to preheat to 100 heat on the holosmith and then use these buttons. And I'm trying to learn this opening rotation now. And you always have a rotation video. Here you see the golem setup, which conditions to apply. And then we can watch the opener. So as you can see, we start at 100 heat, do some grenades, enter. That, that was grenade kit 2. Enter the Hollow Forge, press 3, use these buttons here, and use Photon Wall, Grenade Barrage, Photon Wall again. And after that, well, let's, let's try to do this first part first. Right, let's spawn a Golem. And we'll have to preheat a little bit. This is a bit annoying with Holosmith. Right. So we go in. And this was not the rotation. Take another look. So we go shrapnel grenade, corona burst, use the full belt skills, use these here. Alright, I think we can do that. Let's try again. We don't have to respawn the golem for this while we're just practicing the, the order of skills. 
can simply go again with the same golem until you figured out what to do. All right, you have a hundred heat. Use these skills and one auto attack chain. He overheated because he was slow. Take another look at what Polo does here. 100 heat. And let's try to replicate this. So it's important to exit right when we did the whole of force 3. Or else he will overheat. And maybe we try starting with slightly lower heat to make it a bit easier. All right. So these skills. All right. It says here that we have to do an auto attack chain. Actually, after the laser disc, photon blitz, prime light beam, we do an auto chain and then Corona Burst again. Let's actually see if that's what's going on here, because it does seem really fast. So, three. Yeah, so if I do an auto attack chain here, I would simply overheat. Um, this, this is actually just wrong. Um, on the website, thought so. All right, no auto attack chain. Ah, we found a mistake. Okay, so <coughs> no auto attack chains, but we start at 100 heat. And this. Um, that was wrong. Alright, in the background you see the remainder of my progress over the first hour on this new build. You can see how I progress on the golem, mainly by repetition. What is important to me is that I do things as accurately as possible from the start. Ultimately I'll get faster and faster, the lack of speed at the start is not of major concern. However, I want the skill order to be correct before moving on to the next part of the rotation. When you learn a rotation, your fingers will quickly get used to certain sequences of buttons and it may be difficult to unlearn things that you started doing wrong. When I practice an opening rotation, for this reason I will always reset the golem whenever I make a mistake. This makes for a lot of resets over the course of an hour. I've actually produced a total of 88 locks during this single practice session. What's interesting is that as soon as I got the opening roughly down to what it should be, is that I was also able to extend this opening simply by repeating the newly learned pattern indefinitely. While this execution obviously still leaves a lot to be desired, it actually got me to 90% of the benchmark with barely any knowledge on how to continue the rotation just by the strength of the opening itself. After such an hour long practice session, the next step for me is to go into a few actual encounters with it to see how much of the muscle memory I retain. Next golem session then entails repeating the opener until I get comfortable beating my previous best opener of 46k dps and then slowly expanding into the second loop with the help of the rotation video. From that point onwards, my focus shifts to learning how the rotation plays out over time, so I do much fewer resets in that second session as the rotation picks up speed. However, I think grinding to 95% of the benchmark or even higher, should be the subject of a whole new video. For now, let's briefly summarize the most important insights we gained. We started with an exercise on auto attack chains, then went into queuing abilities, skills without cast time, looked at how priority skills like healing or the soul beast F3 interrupt the preceding abilities, and finally we had a look at weapon swaps. All these components are in one way or another present in the Holosmith rotation. The Holo Forge acts like a weapon swap, canceling abilities. We do have a lot to queue. We have priority skills like Pistol 5 and Elite skill that will cancel previous abilities. And we also do have some tool belt skills that do not have a cast time. 
but we have all the tech chains we really want to finish, etc, etc. My knowledge of the basics lets me pick up a new rotation relatively quickly. For this reason, I think it's important for you to not just learn a rotation, but also be aware of these mechanical fundamentals. You don't need to spend a massive amount of time practicing the basics in a vacuum. Targeted rotation practice does yield better results more quickly. But I felt like it's important to, for once, talk about these mechanical basics, because to my knowledge, no other guide ever provides guidance in that direction. That's it for this video. I hope you found this insightful and I wish you a wonderful day.